So many yields back. We'll now go to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Meeks, uh, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Powell, for, for being here. Uh, and I think I want to pick up a little bit right where we are. 2019, 2020, the entire world was under the unprecedented pandemic with COVID ready. Is that correct? Yes. At, at the time. And that changed a lot of things with reference because not just for the United States, but for the entire world. And it affected the economies of countries just about on the planet. That's not also correct? Yes. And um, supply chains were disrupted. Uh, in fact, I can remember many Americans and people around the world uh, could not get toilet paper or paper towels and some of the basics. And so the prices, because of, the, you know, of, of supply and demand, skyrocketed, causing the inflation, not only in the United States, but basically all over the world. Is that correct? Yes. And so therefore, the Fed had to do certain things because of what we were in at that particular time. We couldn't just go back and act like the pandemic wasn't there. We had to do something to try to make sure that we were able to get through the pandemic. Is that not correct? Yes. And now we're at that point where we're about to get through this pandemic. And we can look at the rest of the world, what they did or didn't do at that time, but what we did at that time. And as a result of that, three years post the pandemic, when you look around the world, I think that you were correct with what you stated, that by most accounts, our economy is doing well. In fact, I would say our economy is doing better than most of the other countries in the world. Would you say that's correct? I would. And uh, so, you know, I would say then that some of the other countries of the world maybe should have looked at the policies that we put in place thereafter so that they could get out of it, so that they could be, uh, have a labor market that is strong, where the unemployment rate is near a 50-year low. Uh, and as you've stated, inflation is also now coming down faster than any place else on the planet just about. Is that not correct? I think that's right, yeah. And, um, and, and I think that uh, you also recognize a mismatch between the strength of the economy, that's what we're talking about, in the field. And I think that uh, uh, Ranking Member Ward has touched on one of those big issues of housing, of which is now, you know, we're still trying to get, a, get, a, get, get, get that under control. And I think the, the Ranking Member has some ideas on how we can do that, and that, that may be something that you need to consider so that we can further get down uh, the uh, uh, inflation rate. And the other would be um, the commodity markets, because the cost of food is too high in people. So that's something else that we need to get in control. Is that not correct? Yes. And let me just ask this. Can you uh, say that there is a connection, for example, between conflicts in other areas of the world, like Russia's war against Ukraine and all the turmoil in the Middle East and the economic pressures that the United States feels does that not also go into the reason why the cost of commodities can be still higher? Is there a connection therein, Mr. Mr. Uh, chairman? Certainly the war in Ukraine uh, caused commodity prices to move up sharply. So could you tell you what is the, you know, what, what, is the, what, what would the connection lead you to believe that there is an urgent need for us, I would think, for, you know, when we're running out of time, for us to do everything that is in our power in Congress to support Ukraine so that we can make sure that that and other strategic partners uh, that we can help the commodities market and that would help lower the cost of some of the commodities bringing food prices down if we would just be able to pass certain things that's going to help Ukraine right here in the United States Congress. Is that correct? Here's where it gets outside of our, uh, our jurisdiction. So we, we wouldn't, I wouldn't have an opinion on, on Ukraine funding. But if we had more grain that was going through, it wouldn't be, wasn't blocked by Russia, things of that nature, that generally just, well, you know, says that helps bring the cost down. Cost is higher because of the disruption in, 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 the, uh, in, in the Black Sea uh, that's ha happened because of this war. So that would help bring the cost down. That is not necessarily the policies just here in the United States, but that's the policy because of what's going on in Russia, and we need to make sure that we do something to prevent that if we really are serious about bringing inflation down. Is that not correct? I think it's correct that a full supply of grain would, would help with, uh, with, with commodity prices. And so, you know, instead of, uh, of us playing politics with this, 
and acting like it is your fault or anyone else's fault that we had to go and do what we did because of the unprecedented pandemic. What we did was save the economy then, knowing we got some problems that we had now, and now we are recovering quicker and better than any other country on this planet as a result of your policies and the policies of Joe Biden.